Good morning, everybody. Well, we're back in full strength. I got this Stu here, and we got Rick. We got Jonathan in the control room, Nancy Stewart, my co-host by my side here. And for another exciting edition, I guess you could call it, of Rolling Cars. We're going to tell you how to avoid being taken advantage of uh, in the process of buying or leasing a car. Also, maintaining or repairing your car. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I love new listeners because if you haven't heard the show, just stay tuned for a few minutes. You're not going to listen for two hours. We're on to, until 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you probably don't want to listen for that long. You probably got a busy Saturday morning plan. But listen for a few minutes because you'll hear th- some things and you'll learn some things, hopefully. You might even want to call the show about um, car dealers. And that's kind of our sole purpose uh, in existence here is to aid you in arguably the most unpleasant experience that people have in, in uh, certainly in the process of buying something. You know, is you buy a you buy a loaf of bread, you buy a house, you buy a lawnmower. Uh, you ain't seen nothing until you try to buy a car, and um, we're buying cars the way. I guess people bought cars 100 years ago. The car dealers are locked in. They're, they're uh, protected. They're a protected species, actually. Uh, uh, they should be endangered. I say that uh, slightly tongue-in-cheek because I am one of them in full transparency. Um, I am a car dealer and uh, have been for a long, long time. So I kind of came over to the other side, joined you consumers, uh, but I kept my dealership. And I'm trying to right the wrongs that have been foisted upon you, the buying public in America and the whole world, actually. Uh, but we're focusing on the United States. Um, we're going to try to uh, change some things. If we can't change the dealer, we're going to educate you and advise you and consult with you any way we can to help you. So um, the show is basically you when you call the show. Uh, we sit here and look at each other and worry when we don't get calls or text or Facebook post or YouTube posts. We're all over cyberspace. Uh, the telephone number is 877-960-9960. That's 877-960-9960. Please jot that number down if, if you uh, have a second and you can do it safely. 877 877- Nine six zero ninety nine sixty. Now, if you call the show, we're going to answer the phone pretty quickly. I mean, we're if we're on the line with somebody else, obviously we can't hang up on them. But we're going to we're going to move quickly to get to your call, and uh, we like the phone calls. Uh, it's uh, more personal. Uh, that really says it all. We you get a flavor for a person's. Uh, uh, ideas, thoughts, personalities, you know how it is when you're speaking one-on-one. We're in a digital age now. Everything is uh, digital, but uh, you can't beat good old-fashioned chit-chat, and that's what we like to do when you call 877-960-9960. Now, for the majority, because I know a lot of people prefer text, I'm one of them. I'm, I'm not a, a telephone person, uh, mainly because of time. I, I just... There's not enough time, hours in the day, and it, I try to use text as much as possible. So if you're a texter like me, our text number is 772-497-6530. That's 772-497-6530. And uh, if we don't get your text right away, I just told you we're going to prioritize phone calls, 877 877- Nine six zero ninety nine sixty. But if you text us at seven seven two four nine seven six five three zero, are you getting dizzy? I am. I'm not throwing these numbers out so I'm so not, fast. I'm, I, I'm good. I think I think uh, I think Stu dozed off there. I, I, was, I, was I don't blame my him. Back. <laughs> but we're on Facebook and um, Facebook dot com forward slash rolling cars. Facebook.com forward slash Roland Cars. Stu Stewart, he monitors that, and he also monitors the text. So, uh, and, and then Rick Kearney to my right, who is also our automotive repair and maintenance expert, uh, he monitors 
YouTube, youtube.com forward slash rolling cars. So you can post on YouTube and uh, he'll get he'll get that right away. Um, I always emphasize Rick because uh, the uh, what is it? The romance of the, of the automobile is buying no, you, a new car. Here's the truth: you like him better than all of us. No, 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 no. Right, I just, guys? I just think he's got more information. <laughs> I'll be honest with you: he's Maybe got so. more specific information <laughs> that on a daily basis you can use. And we probably have. You only buy a car every four or five, six years. You repair your car every three or four or five months. Or maintain your car, I should say. Hopefully, you don't have to repair the car every three or four, five months. But if you do have a little thing with your car, Rick is the guy. So if you if you just go to YouTube.com, he'll see it right away. Or you can call Dr. Rick at 877-960-9960. Rick, for you new folks, Rick has been in the business for over a quarter century, technically. And he's evolved from a, a grease monkey part of the expression, just an old-fashioned mechanic, into a robotic electronics, uh, Cyborg. you could even say artificial intelligence. Well, he's, he, he's got real intelligence, but uh, he understands the high-tech cars of today. And let me tell you something, I sometimes think the engineers that designed them don't understand them. They, I, I guarantee you, the manufacturers in general that we deal with, they don't understand them. They are... Uh, off the radar in terms of high tech, I, I help teach them how yeah. to what they built. Yeah, well, Rick, I, I explained to him what they built. He he's not joking. That's Rick, uh, and he's telling the truth. Rick fills out reports on cars to tell the engineers what they build, what these cars are doing, and they say, "Oh, well, we didn't know it would do that," and then they fix it. So, uh, but but let's give uh, due credit to the engineers of all the make cars. Uh, they know that the guys in the field that are looking at the real McCoy products when they come in the door with a problem and they fix it, they you know, they they know a little bit more about the car than the engineer that designed it. The engineer designed the car; they know what it's supposed to do. Rick Kearney knows what the car really does. So, if you want to short circuit <clears throat> having to go to General Motors or Toyota or Honda and find out what really is going on with your car. Call Rick Kearney at 877-960-9960 or go directly to him on YouTube. And you can send him a, a, a video clip, an audio clip, uh, and uh, really uh, get a free diagnosis. You go into a car dealership, uh, you, you're probably going to pay a couple hundred bucks for what Rick can tell you for free. So uh, I'm really pushing Rick this morning, but it's true. He really does. Uh, That's a good point. He does. Absolutely. Now. We also have a secret line. Don't tell anybody about this. It's a secret. I didn't know about a secret. Youranonymousfeedback.com. <laughs> I knew about that. If you if you go to youranonymousfeedback.com, we don't know who you are, where you are. We can we can't come and find you, and you have total privacy. And uh, we get some very interesting uh, uh, anonymous feedback. So your y o u r anonymous. A N O N Y M O U S feedback, just the way it sounds, dot com. Your anonymous feedback dot com. And I swear, you have my word of honor, we don't know who you are unless you tell us. And some people do it, they tell us. <laughs> I don't know why they use the anonymous feedback, but they say, uh, hi Earl, this is a Charlie. But that's okay. If you, you can tell us who you are. Um, your anonymous feedback.com. That way you can be candid. You might you might have something you would be afraid would hurt our feelings. You might have something that is maybe not uh, a little profane, profound, whatever it could be. You can say anything, and we will read it on the air, only bleeping the uh, ex expletives, but we'll we'll read it on the air, kind of like the text. So that pretty much um, sums it up of what we do. Uh, I'm going to turn the mic over to Nancy Stewart. She is our female consumer advocate. Females are different than males. Breaking news, okay? Uh, they, they like different cars than men. They drive different cars than men. But you know something? They buy and lease just as many cars, maybe even a few more. So there's such an important economic impact on the world. We like to build up as many female cars as we can. And Nancy... 
she, she got the uh, parity in female male callers up uh, from zero when we started 20 years ago. Now we're 50-50 female callers. And one of the reasons is for a special offer she has for you ladies out there, you females listening, if you haven't called the show before, listen to what Nancy will do for you and uh, give to you if you do that phone call. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Welcome to another exciting show. Boy, do we have a lot of information to share with you. Uh, that consumer report, my goodness, if you didn't receive it, if you didn't go out and purchase it, it is really definitely worth its weight in gold, and that's the uh, February edition that I'm talking about. Also, April. Uh, also, um, I haven't gotten to that yet. Oh, sorry. Um, also, uh, there's the uh, edition that I uh, stumbled upon at Publix, and that is the uh, used car edition, uh, the uh, most reliable. And uh, I believe that that, th that is 20, uh, 23 April, as uh, Earl just suggested. So uh, with all that, and we, <laughs> we have a, a great uh, mystery shopping report, I'll give you a little hint. Second to none since 1931. That's all I'll say. The I promised. Notorious. Uh, I re notorious. I, mm, that's a good word. Uh, I promised uh, the recovering car dealer that I would control myself. I'm going to try. Okay, ladies, ladies, ladies. As Earl said, you are a huge part of the auto industry. You really are financially big, very big. You make a lot of decisions. Uh, we uh, encourage you to call this show and be part of the show. Your voice is very important. The number is 877-960-9960. And you can also text us if you're a little shy at 772-497-6530. This morning I have $50 for the first two new lady callers fifty dollars give us a call toll free at 877-960-9960 excuse me while i turn off my timer um i have some interesting news from the automotive news about uh, ladies and how brands take well how they rank among female car buyers i have a question for you ladies uh, give us a call this morning and let us know what your favorite car is to drive. Uh, in the automotive news, they talk about the popularity of, uh, and, and this is for women uh, that drive this, these vehicles. That's the uh, Buick, the uh, Mitsubishi, the Mini, the Lexus, Infiniti, Mazda, Kia. Um, it's, it's really interesting. And the, the cars that they don't like, well, GMC. Ford, Tesla, uh, to, to, to name a few. Uh, so help us out here. Join in uh, the uh, show and give us your opinion. Give us a call and let us know how you uh, feel about these brands that rank among female buyers, female car buyers. Yeah, I, guess, uh, um, I don't know why. Why do women like Buick so much? I, and and I, I know you do because that's where the survey came out. But why? Uh, you know, I, I don't think uh, the average person, I never thought, that, I, I thought Buick was a good car. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but I've never heard of it as being the number one car. So you ladies out there, we'd love to hear from you why, uh, uh, according to the survey, a lot of you are driving Buicks. Why is that? We men would be curious. Yes, very much so. 877 or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Buicks listen. That's mm -hmm. why. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> See, we have two comedians in the studio. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 I, I, is there anybody? We're, this, I don't know Nancy anybody. Nancy doesn't even know why. When she said in the car coming in, we're talking about it. Why do women like beauty? I don't know. That's the reason. If you don't know, you ask the question. Hey, so. if anybody out there wants to know what my favorite car is to drive, it's the Barracuda. I know that. <laughs> Okay, uh, getting back to some serious stuff. Your anonymous feedback, it's real important. Use it. 
www.youranonymousfeedback.com. Now back to the recovering car dealer. Excuse me. We have to get to the phones. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to Jan. And Jan is calling us from Lake Worth, and she is a first-time caller. Oh, wow. Good morning, Jan. Hey, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. I can. Welcome. Oh, you just won yourself fifty dollars. Well, thank you. I just want to say first and foremost, I enjoy your show. I'm always in my car. I'm driving to the gym. I take some uh, classes, and I always turn you on uh, in the morning. And um, I always learn something. And I'm so grateful that that you have the show. Oh, thanks. Thank well, you. Thank you. Jan, what kind of a car do you drive? I'm right now driving the Toyota Camry Hybrid. It's a 2012. Uh huh. Wow. Put it in 2014 with 20,000 miles on it for $20,000. And I just love it to death. It, it does everything for me. You know, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, we were, we were wondering why. We, we read a survey in Automotive News that said women prefer Buicks. And so uh, obviously you don't prefer Buicks, but. Uh, uh, do you have any thoughts on Buicks? Do you have any fr- women friends that love Buicks? I think I used to own one. Uh, okay, and, and there, there you go. I think that there was, it was a large one, and my kids used to call it the gangster car. You know, I used to yeah. take kids to school. <laughs> I used to be that chauffeur. That's and funny. On school trips, you could fit a lot of kids in the car, and then they used to write a thank you note and say, Oh, thank you, Jan, for taking us on the school trip. We love your gangster car. You know, it was, it was love. <laughs> Great. Uh, did you know the Toyota also stands out uh, in popularity among women? Yes. It's a well, conservative. Good. It's a smart, too. Okay. It's a Pardon me? Yeah, I think it's like a conservative car. You know, it has, yeah. you know, I like the bells and yeah. whistles, like yeah. this, but it's just a basic car. Jan, does it surprise you that women uh, don't, uh, well, they're, they're, they're not interested in driving a Tesla? No, that's not true. That might be my next car. Two out of my four sons have Tesla. Oh, uh, well, thank you. You've just proved the automotive news wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's who you associate with, you know? Like, two out of my four sons own them, and uh, they let me drive them, and they're trying to get me into it because I'm getting older. I'm going to be 70, and they want me to have more, uh, more safety features. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a uh, great reason. I'm 80 and I do drive a Tesla Platt. Well, let me rephrase that. My husband and I drive a Tesla. Wonderful. So, what can we do for you this morning? Well, I just wanted to uh, call you and just um, uh, just tell you how much I en- I enjoy listening to you, and I'm a first caller, and that was kind of like an incentive as well. <laughs> Thank you very much for the call. Yeah, take thanks for taking the time, especially when you're going to work out. You go, girl. You betcha. <laughs> Have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Stay on the line and give me your contact information, Jan. Sure okay. will. Okay, uh, we're going to go to uh, Tony, who's calling us from Port St. Lucie. Good morning, Tony. Hi, good morning. How are you? Great. Um, I enjoy your show also. It's a great program. And when I did work, I was in the automotive industry a little bit. I was a vendor for the car companies, and you guys always had a great reputation. So that was good, too. Um, but my question is, are you taking orders on the grand, um, what is it, Highlander that's coming out in 24? Yes. Two. Yes. Okay, you are taking. Okay, so they have pricing. They have everything. No. So if I come down and talk to them, okay. No, no, there's not exactly Good. pricing. Just ex- we have approximate pricing, knowing that every model okay. year uh, goes up um, a, a small amount. Actually, right. last year they went up a large amount <laughs> to, I guess, an inflation yeah. adjustment. But usually like one percent. And um, but also if if you put in an order for a 2024 Highlander, that vehicle is going to get delivered well in in 2024, and we anticipate uh, pricing um, coming down considerably um, by then. Certainly, we anticipate it coming down this. It is coming down, and it slowly uh, throughout this year. So. Um, it'll be market pricing. I don't think dealers uh, then will be charging over MSRP then, and um, 
So okay. you just get just get on a, get on, get in an order, and um, it's going to take some time. But getting in early is the smartest thing to do. Yeah, my I've owned Toyota and Lexuses for the last twenty five years, and they're great products. Uh, knock on wood, never had a problem with any of them. And some of them I had over a hundred thousand miles on, and you know they're just great products, very reliable, um, very happy with them. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about buying the. Um, the Palisades because they're a little bit bigger. And right now I have a Sienna hybrid, you know, the 2021. Right. And I was thinking about trading it in on a Palisades, but I really wanted to stay with the Toyota product. It's just the Highlander was a little small where the Grand Highlander looks by its dimension right. are going to be similar product to the, you know, the bigger Palisade. product. Yeah. That's yeah, what, that was exactly. the area they're trying to, Toyota's trying to get in there with the Grand Highlander. Looks right. pretty good. And and it's, they'll uh, be coming out in a platinum and a limited, also, right? They they always do that. They're they're always they're going right. to be divided okay. up by trim levels. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you very much. I'll be coming down to see you then. You welcome. Thanks Tony. for thinking Thanks. of us, Tony. Have a great weekend. All righty. Bye bye. Eight seven seven nine six zero ninety nine sixty, or you can text us at seven seven two four nine seven six five three zero. Youranonymousfeedback dot com. Don't forget that. That's real important. Uh, now back to the recovering car dealer. Yeah, the backdrop uh, that uh, Jonathan put together for us is the cover of the April annual auto edition of Consumer Reports. And uh, I've been reading this as long as I can remember. And uh, this is the best uh, annual auto edition I've seen. If, if you take nothing else from this show, if you're watching, if you're listening... Um, watching a podcast or any other way, uh, you, you should get a copy of this. I uh, Even if you're not going to buy a car, you probably have friends that are buying cars, family members. This is excellent. Uh, they, uh, they did an outstanding job. They, they really ranked the, the, all the new cars and the used cars. And uh, you can even buy a car through Consumer Reports. Uh, you can go to a, a Consumer Reports, uh, cr.org, uh, dash, care, uh, I, 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 see, C-A-R-E. You need your magnifying glass. Yeah, call tracker, yeah. Anyway, um, this is the safest, uh, most reliable, accurate way to buy a car. And uh, they even have a QR code uh, behind me. I, I think you should be able to capture that with your smartphone and go directly to Consumer Reports. But uh, if you're thinking about buying a new used car, that's the very first thing you should do. I mean, we like you to listen to the show. Uh, we have some good information. Uh, oh, we have some good information for you on the show, but uh, uh, this Consumer Reports can not only tell you the best car to buy, it also tells you the cars you don't want to buy. And I always say... I know you probably don't want to buy the number one car, the number two car. Everybody has personal feelings about cars, okay? Uh, but you don't want to buy the worst car, right? And Consumer Reports has a list of the worst used cars and the worst new cars. Now, fortunately, there's not, not, not that many of them. So if you just did nothing else to buy that Consumer Reports April edition, to find out the cars you don't want to buy, I mean, uh, you would really feel you do really feel stupid. I hate feeling stupid. I mean, I, I, I make mistakes, and if I make an honest mistake, uh, you know, I, I can live with it. But if I make a stupid mistake, I beat myself up for about two days. So don't beat yourself up for two days by buying a car that Consumer Reports told you was a terrible car, and uh, pick up a, an edition of the April. Uh, annual auto uh, uh, consumer reports. You can get it free at the library. You can e- you can even go online free uh, at the, at the local library, and and you can uh, go online or you can you know pick up a copy at the newsstand. So or you uh, subscribe. Anyway, uh, I'm I swear to you I'm not an agent for consumer reports, and I don't get a, uh, a commission for selling consumer reports. And I know a lot of people out out there don't like. Consumer Reports. I've had my issues with Consumer Reports. They're not perfect. 
The only thing they are is they are totally honest. And consistent. And I will stake my life on that. They are honest. <laughs> they don't take money from the manufacturers of automobiles. They don't take money from car dealers. They don't take all the they, they only they, they exist on on contributions. They they don't accept advertising. When they test a car, they buy it for the sticker price. They go to the car dealer, and they don't say, I'm Consumer Reports. They just say, I want to buy that car. They buy it, and they test it. So total transparency, total honesty. I know they're not always right. I know they make mistakes, but they're right about 95% of the time or maybe even better. Yeah, I agree with you. They aren't always right. No. But 95 or more percent of the time, they are. Yeah. And uh, they test these vehicles, uh, as you said, they purchase them, and uh, the number of miles that they drive these vehicles is really impressive. It's it's not only impressive, uh, but it just really helps to, you know, walk you through this landmine that we call uh, <laughs> the auto industry. Um, the uh, other addition uh, that I have in my hands is the U car uh, that just came out and they list the worst the very worst they had the very worst list of used cars that you can check out and it just helps to prepare you on this journey to purchase a vehicle and there's a whole lot of other great information in this edition and by the way um it i picked this up at Publix uh yesterday I, it was really an accident that i saw it on the stands i had never seen uh something like this before but it's it's a great bible 877-960-9960 or you can text us at 772-497-6530 we're going to uh talk with doug he's a regular caller and uh, he's calling us from boca Good morning. Good morning, Doug. Hey, Doug, is that you? I hear your cat. <laughs> I think we got a. My middle down. name's Doug. Yeah, call back, Doug. We can't hear you. Your middle name's Doug. Okay. I think his cat dialed us. <laughs> I'll call back. Oh no, I hear him. Oh, I hear you, Doug. I hear you. You hear me now? I'm yeah, we can through. hear you now. Yeah, yeah, we heard. Well, you, you were, you, you're probably guzzling coffee, right? <laughs> No, actually, I didn't make it yet. I yelled at Sim. I said, please, boil the water. <laughs> I'm coffee-less. <laughs> so, Sim had this miraculous thing happen with her Honda Accord. It's a 2018, and she extended the lease, right? Uh-huh. And she kept extending the lease. <laughs> and it's... Well, it's I still be able to... It's a 2018, and now it's 2023, and they said we have till April. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've never heard this before, that a company like Honda would do that. It's just bizarre. Um, it is, yeah. You're right. Because we were supposed to turn it in, you know, almost, almost two years ago. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. Uh, that's uh, that. You, that's a record. That could be a Guinness record. I, I don't know why they, why they would do that. But uh, that's great. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a bargain for you. Right. And so, I want to get into a Toyota, but the the situation with the GRs makes me want to give up on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What other kind of Toyota would you suggest that wouldn't be like seventy, eighty thousand dollars, like the Supra? <laughs> well, you know, the, uh, again, I'll go back to Consumer Reports. I know I sound like a broken record, but they rank uh, the Corolla as, uh, I think, the best car, the best new car. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and so it's uh, very reasonably priced compared to all the others. And uh, uh, that's, that's what, uh, you know, that's not coming from me. That's coming from Consumer Reports. What is it you're really yeah. looking for, though? Well, I wanted the GR, but I gave up on that since it's it's like a, I don't want to mention, <laughs> it, just like every dealership I talk, they'll call me up and they go, oh, we got the core in. Yeah. I go, well, how much is that? And they well, sticker price is this, but we added this and that. Mm -hmm. and, right. So um, you're looking at the GR Supra. Yeah. The BMW. The, the, GR, the GR Corolla. 
Yeah, the, the, oh, the GR. Okay, well, yeah, it was a Corolla hybrid. I'm sorry, Doug. It was a Corolla hybrid. Uh, uh, that's the number one car, and then the uh, uh, Cross is uh, the number two car. Sounds like I'm doing a commercial, but let's go to the number three car is a Subaru Forester, and the Ford Maverick hybrid. Um, so, uh, as I say, if you uh, don't have a copy of the April Consumer Reports, which you probably don't because it just came out, but you can thumb through there and you'll find at least their opinion on the best car you should buy. Okay, and I still have my Honda Civic Si that was a replacement for the one that was struck by lightning. So, oh. Honda's a so great car. Honda, Honda's one of, the, one of the top cars in the world. There's also the rumor that they're going to take the uh, Toyota 86, which is the old Scion FRS, and make that, uh, that's going to be a GR soon. Yeah, and that's the one I was interested in, too, but when that'll be available is, uh, is, yeah. <laughs> is sketchy. <too. clears throat> Probably another uh, year, too. Yeah. Easy there, Rick. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> a, year, a year or two for that one. And then Sim says, well, why don't we get a Tesla? And, and I know you guys did, but I'm, I'm still not sure about electric cars. I know they're good, but you still have things about them, like you have to put a special outlet in your house in order to charge them, right? So, well, well you, you don't have to. I mean, you can use outside chargers, but they have a... Uh, they, they, it is convenient. I love it because I every night I just... I just uh, plug in the uh, uh, you know the Tesla, and uh, you never think about charging. It's just automatic. You you charge it every day, and you got a full charge. I got 300 miles, uh, and of course I don't drive 300 miles a day usually anyway. So uh, I love oh. the idea of charging. Yeah, it's and not it's not difficult at all. We really have, you know, we really have a have it down pat now i mean before we would forget to charge you know the tesla but it's just it, it's it's like having a cup of coffee you can relate to that you just plug it in and i usually unplug it in the morning because sometimes you know earl always says to me i'm really afraid that i'm going to forget to unplug the tesla and i'm out there and i can see it so i just take it up but it's just in the beginning, I think, it was I think difficult. about getting a very long cord just in case. So, <laughs> yeah, but, now I got it handled. <laughs> and well, the unit you. is waterproof too, so you can mount it. My neighbor has one mounted on the outside of their house. Oh, wow! So I mean, it's cool. you don't have to have it like totally garaged. It'll mount outside, um, and I guarantee. That Tesla's smart enough. You're not going to drive away with that cord connected. Yeah. It's hey, Doug, not going to even Doug, Doug, you'll enjoy this. Uh, Rick sent me an article. Did you know that Mississippi is making it, it illegal to sell electric vehicles? What? <laughs> Who's doing that? Mississippi. Mississippi. Oh. The state of, the state of Mississippi is, is telling the electric car manufacturers that they cannot sell cars out of... Uh, uh, facilities, uh, brick and mortar building, brick and mortar facilities, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm not, not going to make any comments. There are people out there from Mississippi I know that are very nice people and very intelligent There's people. Probably people in Mississippi well, very I'm embarrassed gonna, by that. I won't, I, but to me, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, I just <laughs> <laughs> well, they're they're going to make them follow. It, it's the, the dealerships there. And the other manufacturers, the other auto manufacturers, are going to make them follow that same tried and, well, messed up situation where they've got to have dealerships for electric cars, the same as regular cars, Wait, which gonna, will ruin, like... Which ain't going to happen dot yeah. com, so that's uh, just a way, another okay. way of saying we don't like electric vehicles. Okay, hey, uh, Doug, uh, do you have any other questions? I'm really sorry to uh, cut you short. We are really backed up on the phone no, lines. No, no, you gave me lots of time. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see you guys in the morning. Thank you so much. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. And here's some information uh, via Jonathan. Thanks so much, Jonathan. Uh, did you know that General Motors hired a female engineer? Uh-huh. They, they hired a female engineer to build the features on the Buick models, such as better seating, 
and bigger cup holders, amongst other things. All the answer so to the question. Here's, there's, there's some of the reasons wow, why. See, I, uh, I knew women. there had to be an answer, and that is what, you know, yeah. I, Thanks, kudos Jonathan. to General Motors. I mean, duh, you want to sell cars to women? Let a woman help design the car, and she understands women? Wow, that's a great th Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we are going to go back to the phones. We're going to talk to David from New Jersey. Good morning, David. Good morning. Um, I have a question for Rick today. Yes, he's right okay. here. Right here. Hey, Rick. Well, first, I want to thank you a couple, about a, two months ago, I called about my um, windshield wipers. The dealer, the Toyota dealer, wanted to change the um, switch, and you suggested the motor. And I ordered the motor, they put it in, and that was the problem. You know, it was only working on the high speed. Yep. And you gave me some reasons why it probably was the motor, and you were right. So that really helped me out. Saved me time and money. Good. I'm, I'm glad. Excellent. Okay. So now my question is now. Now the car, it's a 2012 Prius. I'm the original owner. has about 160,000 miles. And now the light's staying on on the dashboard. So the dealer wants to change the four devices, but that's kind of too expensive. It's like eight hundred and fifty dollars to do it. Is it any? Then they'll put aftermarkets in, but they told me they generally don't work. I would have to bring it to them, and no guarantees. Wait, which light is staying on? The um, tire pressure is staying on and blinking, and they said it's the devices and the wheels need to be changed. Right, the the uh, tire pressure sensor. Um, it could be one, or it could be two or three or all four of them have either the battery has finally given up and it's reaching a low point where the battery can't send a signal out or the unit itself has simply died. And 11 years old, yeah, they do start hitting that point. Um, our dealership, we've actually reduced our price on them. It's like $100 each on the, the sensor itself. And then the labor is about, I want to say about 150 for the first one, 200 for the second, third, and fourth. Because any, anything over the first one is just one price for the up to the uh, next four of them. Um, the, the problem is that you can replace it, but it's got a code number written on that sensor that you need to make sure you save that code number because then that has to be programmed into the computer in the car so that it knows what sensor to look for. Uh, now they've got them, the newest ones coming out, will uh, the car will automatically detect it and understand, hey, that's my sensor after it's been driving down the road for a few miles, and it will even determine where on the car that sensor is. But with the older ones, yeah, they it, it does get a little pricey to replace those. Can, no other, does he have to go to the dealer to do that? Generally, yes, because yeah. our software for programming that part is proprietary. Um, your other option really is um, just follow the old-fashioned check my tire pressures once a month like everybody used to do, and a little bit of black electrical tape hides that light and you never even see it. And because, I mean, we're not talking a system that is required by law. We're not talking a system that is going to prevent you from having a serious breakdown. Yeah, that's what I do, David. I think that's a great idea. A little black friction tape over the light, and uh, be sure you check your tire pressure once a month. Yeah, I mean, well, just, it, yeah, just, just like we used to do. That's what I was going to do if, if I couldn't do it any lower. The only thing is if you do have a flat or a blowout while you're driving, yeah. Won't, you know, won't. And the fact that it, the fact that it's expensive yeah. is the fact that you have to go to the dealer, and uh, you, you're from New Jersey. You might uh, call your local uh, uh, legislator in New Jersey and say, um, "Have you considered the Right to Repair Act?" The Right to Repair Act is starting to be put in different states, and they're lobbying in Florida right now for that. Uh, trying to get that in, which says that any independent uh, repair company has right to the data and the software and the information that the manufacturer has on the car. Right now, it's a secret between the dealer and the manufacturer. 
So ABC Repair Company uh, can't buy the diagnostic machinery. They can't they can't get the information, the software to do a repair. So they they limit the competition. Therefore, the prices are sky high. If you get that through in New Jersey, I guarantee you the re replacement cost of those sensors would be half of what you're having to pay now. Well, that's what Costco told me. They do them, and they actually did some on a car of mine years and years ago, mm -hmm. but they said they can't do them on Toyota and Lexus because right. of what you just said. Yeah. But well, I mean, I realized that that was true. Yeah. If, if you go back to any car before 19, uh, 2004, when those sensors were first being installed, um, just it was only a couple years before that that they were using the what's called a non-intrusive system, where the computer would simply look at the wheel speed sensors and say, "Oh, this wheel's traveling at a different speed than the other three constantly, so it must be low on air." But you go back just a few years before that, my cars never had sensors or anything. We got water cold. I only knew if the tire was low by looking at it. So I'll, I'll you, tell you check your tires once a month and you're good. Yeah, great information, right. uh, Rick yes. and David. Uh, if you, you have another question, uh, we'll take no, it. Uh, but we have so many calls backed up. No, I'm good. I appreciate taking my question. Have a good day, everybody. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> and, and David, take a look at that February edition of the new car features that we love. Some we don't. And it uh, talks all, all about what we just discussed, tire pressure and sensors and computers. A hey, 9960 Or you can text us at 772-497-6530. We're going to go to Bill, who has been holding patiently from Palm Springs. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Nancy. I had a question or two for Earl, but first I wanted to ask you, why did you tell that lady you're 80 years old? <laughs> uh, I've seen your picture, I Nancy. Think I, I think I, uh, be lying. before you say anything, you asked me why. Uh, uh, because I think about my age more now than I ever did before. And I should have been thinking about it before because no one believed that my children were my children. They thought were, they thought they were my sisters. Nobody believes you're and, 80. Pardon me? Nobody believes you're 80. And right now, at 80 years old, I think about mortality, and I think about what uh, life I have left ahead of me. And I should have been doing this before, but I'm doing it more so right now and trying to enjoy every single moment on this earth. And I'm proud that I lived this long, but I want to live, it sounds ridiculous, another 80 years Okay, I answered your I un question. I understand. I, no, I, I understand. I, I think about my own mort mortality at times. But uh, anyways, I had a question or two for Earl. Okay. He's right there. Earl. Uh, I'm, I I'm 82 years callers. old. <laughs> <laughs> Earl, I, I, I know you have a lot of callers, uh, and you might have wrote about this in your book. That isn't going to stop me from knocking him off his chair. <laughs> <laughs> your father was Doug Stewart, right? Uh, that's my brother. He was my uh, older brother, half brother, actually. Oh, and uh, okay. uh, Earl Stewart was my was my father, and I'm Earl Stewart Jr. And sitting across from me is Earl Stewart the third, now A.K.A. Stu, the last of the earls. Yes, the okay. last of the earls. <laughs> okay, I, I know you have a lot of callers with more pressing questions on financing and and questions for Rick and all, but I was just wondering if I could ask you about. Uh, your brother. I was born and raised here, mm -hmm. and uh, while I never met him, I do remember him from his uh, television commercials. Yeah, <laughs> and I was just wondering. I was just wondering how he got his start in the business, and uh, when and where y'all were originally from here. Or was your dad in the business also? Yeah, uh, my my dad started to Stuart Pontiac in 1937. And, uh, in West Palm? In West Palm Beach, yeah. And, okay. uh, and, and my brother, uh, Doug Stewart, at that time uh, was in Detroit, and he was working for G GMAC, General Motors Acceptance Corporation. And uh, after my father bought the, uh, the uh, well, he, he started it from scratch with a man named Lawrence Obey, and there were 50-50 partners. So uh, in 1945... Um, he asked my brother, uh, I was five years old at the time, and I was too young to work in the dealership. <laughs> so, so he asked my brother to come uh, to West Palm Beach, and he did. And he came into the business with my father. So that's, that's how Doug Stewart 
uh, started in the business and uh, 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 automotive background, General Motors Acceptance Corporation. Okay, so your dad built the dealership, the Pontiac dealership down there on Dixie. Yeah, it was uh, Lawrence Obi was his partner. Uh, my, if you want the real history, my mother uh, loaned him her life savings, uh, ten thousand dollars, to uh, start the dealership, and then Obi put in the rest of the money. And rumor had it that he got his money from bootlegging during Prohibition, but that's only <laughs> really? a rumor. And uh, they started the dealership, and uh, the rest is history. Why does Lawrence Obi sound familiar? What else did he do? He, that name sounds familiar for some reason. You know, honestly, uh, he lived at La, the Fontana Apartments on Flagler. Uh, he lived, uh, he was from Michigan. He had a sailboat. And uh, my father told me that he used to get booze in Canada and sail it across uh, uh, the uh, Lake Michigan or whatever it is nice. and, uh, and sell it during Prohibition. And he made, made a lot of money. When was repealed? So, so I, I mean, he's he, he uh, Lawrence Obi is long passed away, and I, I think the statute of limitations is up, so I can let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> so, did your dad build the Pontiac dealership on Dixie? Uh, yes, he. Well, actually, uh, it, the very first one was on Olive, and uh, that building no longer exists. And then he uh, he moved into the Pontiac dealership, which was at 1928 South Dixie Highway. Right, right across the Carefree Theater. Everybody, a lot of people, old right. time. Yeah, right next to right. it. Yeah. And Roger Dean was down the street before he moved out west. Yeah, Roger Dean, yeah. And, and uh, yeah. McCoy was a, a first Toyota dealer. He moved into the place where Roger Dean was. It's just a lot of history. You sound like a guy that's been around town for a while. Well, I was born and raised here. Oh, yeah. And uh, I remember the Oldsmobile dealership down there on Olive. Oh, yeah. Was, it Harper, was it Harper Olds? Uh, Clark Oldsmobile, Harper Clark. And I mean, Harper, Harper Clark, rather. Harper, Harper, Clark. Um, Harper Clark was my father's first salesman. Really? And then and then apparently he did pretty well because he was able to, to uh, get the Oldsmobile franchise. So uh, a, lot, a lot of history. Okay. I'd love to talk with you about this. I know you have other callers. I'll let you go. Do you write about any of this in your book? I've been I've been meaning to, to get it. I want to get it one day. Yeah, I, well, actually, my, my new book, which is I, I keep saying is coming out. I said it was oh, coming boy. out in January. I lied. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, it's very near being published. So it's called Confessions of a Recovering Car Dealer. And I do talk about uh, what you talked about. Redemption. Okay. Uh, yeah. Redemptions okay. of a recovery car dealer. Yeah. The first one is Confessions of we're, a Recovery Car we're Dealer. We're trying our best to get it, uh, well, published. Wrapped up. <laughs> All right. That's I it, know wrapped you up. Other, <laughs> I know you have other callers. I'd love to sit down with you over a beer one day and talk talk with you. Yeah, I'd like that, but, too, uh, Bill. I'll, I'll, let, uh, I'll let you go. I'll Thank let you go. Thanks, Thank Bill. you. Thanks so much Bye for now. the call. We're going to go to John, uh, who has been holding patiently from West Palm Beach. Good morning, John. Oh, good morning. Um, for the gentleman that called earlier about uh, wanting to get a GR, but now he's thinking, well, he was turned off about the Tesla because he he had to get a different uh, uh, outlet. Yeah, I was dog. Yeah. I just wanted, I, I, when I was calling into the station, you may have already answered his question or came up with this, but I, for me, when we bought our Tesla, we bought the charging system that was $500. It's, uh, it runs on 240. We had it installed. Electrician came out mm -hmm. and installed it. We have it on the inside of the garage. And uh, the best investment we ever made, and it's not a special outlet. It just runs off of 240 out of your um, That's correct. Box. Yeah, that's and correct. And, just, and, and if he's still listening, my charging bill for the month, it's on the app. Is only forty six dollars a month yeah. to charge my car at home. Yeah, and that, and I do it at, at midnight is it, when it's sixteen cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah, well, that's real smart. I, I I didn't even think about that. Um, I just poured mine in at night, but I I should wait till the rates go down. Yeah, it's and they and they go through it with you, and that uh, you know you just find out when you're uh, stay off of the peak charging hours, and um, yeah, it, it's listed there. And that, so is there any I, software? And it's, do you know with chargers? 
Do you know if there's any smart uh, like chargers out there that does that automatically? It you know, just kind of draws only during the optimal uh, times. I don't think so, but it should be. I mean, I'm, I, I, as far as I know, uh, I'd have to get up at midnight and plug well, it in. Well, the reason I, I thought about this, sorry for taking a little tangent, but it's related. You know, Tesla sells um, those battery walls for homes, and um, there's a, a, a process where you, you, have, a, you have a big uh, battery in your house, and it charges when the when electricity is cheap, and then you um, only use it when it's expensive. And so you, you eventually you, you whittle down the actual effective cost of the electricity. Yeah. And that would be this, a similar thing with charging a vehicle. It'll happen. I mean, that's a great idea. Yeah, great idea. I just invented that on the radio. <laughs> Earl, I did. Earl, just to let you know, you don't have to get up at midnight. When yeah. you go to charge your car, you can schedule yeah. when your car starts charging. Oh, and that's so right. I, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's exactly. It. Thank you. That was the best step I've had all day. I'll do that. <laughs> so the um, and then if the gentleman's still listening, I was looking last night uh, for some reason. But if ignore the haters out there, there's a lot of bad press. It's always going on about Teslas. Yeah. But right now, if the Tesla, why you can they're they're coming into South Florida here. And they're they're going for fifty one thousand. You yeah. can get it just long range. It, it, isn't it amazing, John? Uh, Elon Musk, I'm going to tell you what, what a great move. I mean, there are going to be more consumers who can afford a Tesla, and it's a great car. And we are moving into, uh, well, we're there. We're not moving into it. Electric. Yeah, and uh, and right now the Tesla Y is eligible for the uh, $7,500. Yeah. There you go. Until March Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, uh, there are actually rumors that uh, mm-hmm. Elon Musk he is uh, planning now to come out with an even lower price Tesla. Uh, his goal is to is to be the number one car manufacturer in the world. Uh, right now, he's halfway there, and uh, he wants to double his sales. Uh, and he's already committed the budget, uh, the billions and billions that he's going to have to spend to do that. And he knows to do that, he's going to have to have a, a Tesla that you can buy all electric vehicle probably for somewhere around 20000 and uh, or maybe less. So uh, when Elon Musk speaks, people listen. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, and then uh, the, I've, I've mentioned it before, uh, but to the, like I said, the gentleman, I think he was in Delray, uh, just – Based on experience, I drive from here to Houghton Lake, Michigan, and it cost me seventy dollars <laughs> one way. Wow! Driving then, from supercharger to supercharger. Wow! <laughs> That's amazing, John. What a thanks statement. for that. Thanks very much. Now, it's nice to hear somebody say nice things about Tesla because you're right. There are a lot of Tesla haters out there, and Elon Musk. It's interesting. I mean, there's anytime something gets uh, hugely popular and successful, there's always another side. But that's, you know, that's the way life should be. Democracy, uh, yeah, speak your speak your mind. Yeah, and, you know, and, and for those that, uh, you know, are on the fence about whether or not a Tesla, hey, go to Turo.com and rent a Tesla for three days and see if you like it or not. You know? <laughs> there because you go. there's a lot of them out there. Win-win. And they go for like, yeah. They go for seventy dollars a day, so it's it's worth it. <laughs> yes. All right. Very good. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Give us You're a welcome. call. Thank you. Give us a call again, 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Uh, ladies, uh, I asked a question earlier, uh, and uh, I I'll repeat it if uh, you're if you're if you didn't hear me. Um, I'd like to know what brand vehicle um, you would rather drive, and uh, also um, this uh, Buick that women would rather drive. Uh, are you one of them? Engineered uh, by a woman. See, that's uh, the genius. I, yeah, I, I'm always saying negative things about General Motors. That is a very positive statement that they had the the uh, foresight to realize. Hey, if you want to sell more cars to women, let a woman design the car, and that's what they did. Yeah. The Buick is designed by a woman. Yeah, the inside of that car, boy, I'll tell you what. You climb into the car. Well, you purchase the car. Then you climb into the car and you're driving, and all of a sudden you say, Lord, what can I do with this seat? You know, it wasn't designed for me, the female, that may have a smaller frame. There, there's just a, a lot of 
uh, great ideas that can come from a, me a female that uh, is a uh, engineer and designs the uh, inside of a car. Um, ladies, uh, fifty dollars. Uh, I have fifty dollars here for one more. One more. I'm out of breath. Uh, first time caller. So give us a call, 877-960-9960. Uh, don't forget your anonymousfeedback.com, and we're going to go to Dick and Jupiter. Good morning, Dick. Good morning. Welcome. How are you all doing? We're doing great. Good to talk with you. Um, I'm a Tesla owner up in Jupiter, and uh, I'm a fanboy about uh, Tesla, and I've talked to you before. Just a couple of reminders. You just were discussing uh, charging at peak, uh, off-peak hours. If you go to your app, you'll find that uh, there's a, a button there you can uh, switch to charge it off off peak hours. Mm -hmm. I'm on. And your uh, I got you my phone. App? Yeah, I'm looking at it right, it up now. right now. Yeah, I'm pulling yeah. it up. Yeah, you can do. I, yeah. I remember that. I think I had that. I never used it back when I was driving that one a couple a year ago or so. But I never even thought why to use it. But yeah, that's uh, to that's right here. I'm looking. At, I, I can't believe I didn't look at this. I'm on, it's a schedule <laughs> and it says all peak charge. Because you don't read reduce yeah, energy right. costs. And yeah. all I got to do is hit this button. I just did it. Wow. Based on the last discussion, I thought it was appropriate to call. I had a couple. Well, another reminder item. I heard you mention a couple times that you have to be plugged in to update your Tesla. You do not have to be plugged in. I'm, I'm, I'm holding that up for the camera. All you Tesla owners that are as stupid as I am, no. I didn't even know that was there. No, they, they read the manuals. How much does this cost me? Because I didn't know that was there. <laughs> probably. Very cool. $20 a month, probably. Thank you, Dick. Yeah, one of those guys when I'm on the road, uh, my uh, I bought mine when it was free, so I can go anywhere in the country for zero. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Zero charge. <laughs> That's great. I do have a, I do have the, the charger in my home, and that works great too. It sure does. I remember hearing about when there, uh, this is years ago. There was a, like supposed to be an, an automatic, an automated robotic charging arm that when you pulled into the um, garage, the snake-like aperture or appendage comes out and plugs your car yeah. in. Yeah, you, right. It looks like you were, had to blow a, like a flute to get a cover <laughs> to come up. And I tell you, I think it just made people think of a Terminator <laughs> and and the attack of the attack of the machines. But that was scary looking. You can, yeah, you can still see a video clip of that on YouTube. Of it was that a, plugging in. Do you know if that was just something somebody made, or was that something Tesla? Really no, made? that's something Tesla looked at, and they didn't like, do it because it scared people. It may <laughs> come yet, because when they get the when they get the automated, you know, full FSD robo cars. Those things got to be charged, so they're going to have to have some way of plugging them in. They do, and 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 and, 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 ultimately, and ultimately, I know a lot. We constantly, I, I see it on like on the feedback we get, um, and we hear it on the show a lot. The anxiety of charging, having a home charger just kind of eliminates all of that. Yeah, Dick, I was playing with my iPhone here after you told me about the off charging, and I just uh, re remembered I have my Tesla in doggy mode now, to show you how cool that is. Uh, I don't have a dog in the car now, but we, we, put it, we put it in doggy mode to keep the uh, air conditioning uh, on so when we get in the car, it's uh, it's the right temperature. So now I'm yeah. looking at the inside of the car, I think I see a and dog my in dog there. got away. The dog's not there. Now I see a dog in there. I'm the same way. Hey, Dick, what's, what's even more fun is whenever I have the app on my telephone also. <laughs> it, this really isn't funny, but... Um, so we're walking towards the car, and I want to uh, activate the hatchback, and uh, Earl wants to do the same thing. Well, he gets to the Tesla, and I decide to close the, <laughs> the hatchback. Is that and a peacock it, for and it hits him in. It hits him in the head. It's it's not yeah. funny, yeah, but the, it, bump, it, the bump is right there. It, we we have and, and and some negative things have happened to me too. But it's just uh, the uh, well do's and don'ts of each one of us having uh, access to features on the Tesla. But we must communicate and know what we are doing because it could be detrimental to our health. I just thought I'd share that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I got a couple of brief items. Another one you have uh, said a couple of times on the air about you had to have your uh, Tesla plugged in for the update. Yeah. 
That is, that's not true. Uh, you can update All right. anywhere you're, you can get on the Wi-Fi. You've got to be close to the Wi-Fi. I'll update mine on the road. Yeah, I was wondering about You know who told me that was my was uh, my financial advisor? <laughs> me. Greg O'Hare. Yeah, he, didn't tell you about, he didn't tell you about the scheduled charging either. I, I, see, people yeah. tell me things. When smart people tell me things, I, they can tell me anything. But what you said makes sense. Why would you have to have it plugged in? Well, no data is coming on the electrical cord. It's well, yeah, I mean, I just, I his believe, madness? <laughs> Didn't he have a motive to his madness? He wanted to drive the car. He had a, I thought he had to plug it into your phone and dial in. Yeah, it comes in the Wi-Fi. I got we had Wi-Fi in the garage, yeah, just, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I just, uh, Greg O'Hare, are you listening? Merrill Lynch, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Greg's out running. <laughs> yes, Rick. Yeah, you can uh, you can update in front of Starbucks if you want or so whatever. Yeah, jo- Johnny Z. Uh, Fraidley says. You're in big dog ranch mode right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, one. One other quickie, just a suggestion. I think on your um, your, your uh, people to go out to help people buy cars, the vigilantes. Vigilantes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think there ought to be a specialist to help people that want to prepare an electric car. Well, that's a great idea. There's a lot about electric cars that uh, you, you can't cover everything on your program. Yeah. And there's a lot of half-truths out there, and uh, I might even volunteer to help you. But that, that's well, we'll, idea call, we'll, make, we'll make you our electric vigilante, and uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're, we'll, we'll, we'll add a subcategory. Stuart does that on uh, the, That's a great name for a band, the electric vigilantes. Electric really the EVs. About. The EVs, yeah. <laughs> the EVs, you get yeah, that's EV. perfect. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, uh, I'm an old guy. I understand uh, that part of it too. <laughs> well, thank you. You're, you are a great call. I love to. I love to have a, a fellow Tesla guy on the phone. We, you know, the shit. I, I, there probably are Tesla clubs. There's Tesla everything. I, I'm not a member of the club, but I, you know, I should be. Oh. We have everything in common. You'd learn a lot. Yeah, the Tesla uh, Tesla owners uh, of Florida is a great uh, outfit. They had a nice big get together up there. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I sent you a notice on it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> How long? It was a couple months ago. Ah. Very okay. good. Okay, 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. And, Julie, thank you so much for holding, and welcome back. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I, had a, I had a quick question. Um a lot of times in the morning, my front and rear windows are fogged up, and I turn on the defroster, and this is a very simple question. If I want it to clear as soon as possible, is it better to use cold air or hot air? Hot air? Uh, actually, the warmer air, but remember this. Keep your AC button on because the okay. air, the, the uh, system then will send the air through the evaporator core. And by mm-hmm. running it through the evaporator core, it'll actually help to dry the air so it reduces the amount of moisture, and the drier air hitting that fogged-up windshield will absorb the moisture away from the glass to help clear it up faster. So hmm. Temperature high, okay. AC button engaged. Okay. Yep. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Julie. 877-960-9960. Science class. Or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Don't forget, youranonymousfeedback.com. And earlier we mentioned Earl's Vigilantes. Uh, you can go to Earl on Cars and you can sign up. It's a, it's a win-win situation. You don't have to know how to take an engine apart, um, but you can help other people in your community. Um, we can all help each other. So go to Earl on Cars where you can sign up for Earl's Vigilantes. You can also win a hat that uh, Earl's son, Stu, designed. Yes, Stu? Oh, I just want to tell Rick that the the air conditioning reduces the vapor pressure deficit in the cabin of the vehicle, since we're getting scientific. Absolutely. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm just digressing. (laughs) That uh, was important. Since I'm digressing, can we talk about that giant bumper sticker on the back of your Tesla? Oh, I would love. I would love to. Can I say (laughs) what I'd I'd like to say about it? It's bigger than the license plate. Oh, it's a safety feature, though. Okay, go ahead. It just. You know, unfortunately, there are people out there who don't like looking at it, and uh, they're very mean to us. Oh, no, I wasn't being mean. (laughs) No, they really are, and we don't need it. Oh, really? People are, like, yelling you on the road? Really? 
Oh, okay. It says... Uh, she so, speaks with fork and tongue. Oh, Nancy well, is? Now, the car has... <laughs> the, 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 we've, been in, uh, we've been driving uh, the Tesla, and suddenly it stops. Okay? With the autopilot. Autopilot. Right. All right. So, so the th- car clearly says on the bumper, autonomous. Okay, that's Correct. where you're getting the thing. Uh, most, So we're not most in people, autonomous. Most people, most people know that when you see driver training cars, it is uh, probably the law. If not, it should be the law. But all all driver training cars say student driver. Right. The reason they say student driver is happen. for obvious reasons. I don't need to explain yeah. that. So if you have if you have a fully autonomous car, we all know that they have not been perfected. Uh, Tesla has been sued. Uh, there's a common discussion about this. Nancy and I have talked about it on the air. Uh, everybody talks about it, that there's a long way to go before a car is fully, uh, totally autonomous. So uh, the beta, these are beta uh, cars on the road, test, test cars, and uh, Elon Musk, the genius he is, has got millions of people out there testing his cars. He has the software wired into the computers in his labs, and he makes uh, constant adjustments, increases the efficiency of the vehicle. Right. So, in the meantime, so so that uh, what what I do, so that people know that if I have my autonomous on, uh, you need to be careful of this car, just like a, a student driver yeah. would be. So you do it as a safety measure you, you, right. for the public. Yes. I, under, yeah, I understand why you. Yeah. You know what, you know what Tesla needs and to there do. Are, there are Tesla haters out there, and and they probably resent the yeah. fact that I, I have an autonomous car, and they probably they well, they we, can't, we, we they call into the show too. We we, we right, and also they probably don't know what autonomous means. They probably it means it's a it's a dirty word. They probably means like a point. socialist. <laughs> but hey, listen real quick. I think Tesla should have like some kind of indicator on the outside of the car, like all these red lights, it goes into kill mode. And yeah. red lights on, everybody exactly. says, stay away from that car. Exactly. <laughs> we don't want to encourage that kind of behavior. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. To my point. Yes. I, I am beat not, that to death, don't you? I am. Yeah. I am you not driving beating. autonomous. I am not in the autonomous mode. The reason? It needs to be perfected. I am not driving in autonomous. I do not want to advertise that I am on the back of the on the bumper. Earl promised me that he would not drive in autonomous because of some near disaster situations that we've been in. Oh so we do not drive in autonomous. I don't drive autonomous with you in the car, but when I am in the car, you promised me you would not drive autonomous. Are you telling me you're driving autonomous when I'm not in the car with you? Popcorn. Ladies and gentlemen, you're you're witnessing a family argument right here on uh, True uh, 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 Stu, your son has gotten out the peanuts and popcorn. <laughs> Obviously, he finds this entertaining. I think this is great radio, actually. Um, I think our ratings are going to soar right now. <laughs> it's great YouTube, too. It is. This is good content. I just don't want to get... Keep uh, going. I don't want to get you all revved up, uh, but I know I do that easily. But we're not driving in autonomous, and we promised each other, and you just broke your promise. You're t- are on, you serious, Earl? You have air. to answer me on the air. Are you out driving autonomous? You can check the app. It'll tell you if he ever went into Thomas mode. Eight seven seven nine six zero ninety nine sixty. That's or in you, the manual. It's in the manual. Or you can text us at seven seven two four nine seven six five three zero. And if you so wish, www. Your autonomous. Your anonymous. I got autonomous on my mind. <laughs> your your autonomous feedback. That's great. <laughs> I'm perspiring. <laughs> I need a fan. Okay. WWW. You're anonymous. You're getting it right. Everybody's cracking up over here. com. Okay. I'm glad everyone finds this amusing. We're going to go to Frank and Jupiter. Good morning, Frank. Well, good morning, um, guys. I had my vigilante hat on, but I think I ought to take it off with my marriage counseling hat on. <laughs> oh, well, that's really funny. <laughs> Hey, look, I tried. What can I tell you? Oh, I got a couple of things for y'all. Um, I, I got a new consumer report, and where they go in about the buying and what the dealers are doing. They, they must have been talking to you guys. I mean, it, it sounds just like your, your talk show for all these years, and someone's finally listening. Obviously, consumer reports. It was a, I'm sure you must have seen that issue. It just came out about buying the new cars and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're looking at it right now. Yeah, I'm looking at it, yeah. 
That's uh, on the backdrop, yeah. Of the, yeah, you know, about the nitrogen in the tires. I mean, just everything that you guys have been um, informing us consumers for years, um, they finally got on the bandwagon and joined you. Yeah, it's uh, it's the best we've seen. They do it every year, Frank. But this this year they outdid themselves. They uh, they just get better. Uh, they they uh, they're becoming uh, worldwide. I think in terms of and it's just not cars. We talk about cars and consumer reports. Uh, I don't buy a product, any kind of uh, investment, uh, without checking consumer reports. I mean, I don't always follow their advice, but I usually do. Yeah, no, that's very true. I, I got an acres in the room that I should have probably opened before I bought what I did buy, but you know, mm-hmm. I learned that. Before, so. And um, back to your, um, uh, I don't remember what the name of that car is you drive. Um, the, um, oh, my goodness, I have a... Tesla anyway, Plaid, yeah. For, yeah, I saw the Plaid version the other day going down North Lake, a white one. And I go, well, Plaid, that's what Earl and Nancy has. <laughs> and I'm looking at it, like, where's those three motors? Where's those bulging wheels? Where's... I mean, uh-huh. normally, normally when you would drive a Porsche, people would say, oh, that's just a VW on steroids. So I figured, <laughs> what, let's see what the Plaid looks like on steroids. It doesn't. It's just yeah. no bolting wheels, no, no you know, racing stripes, nothing. I go, oh, isn't that amazing? So, um, that was interesting to see uh, a, a Plaid finally. And then earlier this morning when you guys were talking about the windshield fogging up, um, I never thought that would work with the AC off like that. And it's very true because when you park the car out here in the farms and under like the, like the pole barn, you don't have all the dew on in the morning. Um, and it's been cool. So I said, well, I'll just turn the AC off and save a few drops of gas. And um, by the time you got to Indian Town Road, it's all fogged up and you can't even see out your window. And you go, this is weird. Turn the air conditioning on and it clears up very quickly. So I guess they just leave the AC on forever. But it's, 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 it's Interesting need to show um, things that have happened in my life in the past or recently. And you guys talk about it. And it's a very, very enlightening show, and I'm very happy to. Uh, well, thank you, Frank. That's very nice to say. Thank you, Frank. Have you a guys great, have a good day. Have uh, a great weekend. We're going to go to Dan and Hope Sun. Good morning, Dan. Welcome. Good morning, Dan. Hey, how y'all doing? Great. Welcome. Good. Good. Well, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you all about how cars handle now versus how they used to. Uh, My first car was a 69 Le Mans, Hmm. and I could steer that thing with one finger, you know, and I loved Hmm. it. And I regret ever getting rid of it. Now, I didn't know what I had. But, you know, I have a Corolla now that I got from y'all, brand new and 16, been a great car, (laughs) hasn't missed a beat. And but it takes both hands to steer it just going around a sharp corner and, and the steering on cars isn't as easy as it used to be. And the other thing is those old land yachts, you, you could run over a railroad tie and not feel it. And now you feel every pebble hmm. that that you run over. I just think like we've kind of maybe moved backwards in that respect now. I just wonder why that is. Dan, that's a, that's a good question. I think it probably has to do with engineering, uh, safety. Um, uh, I think that I, I do remember going way back. Um, maybe it was when power steering first came out, but the the, the steering wheel was extremely easy loose, to move. Really loose, and, and there I, was a lot of play in it. Yeah, a lot of, yeah and, and and they probably determined that wasn't safe. But would would be my guess. You have to have some resistance. And you're absolutely right. The resistance in today's modern power steering is less than it was. It might but, be a f- a f- also just like a like a. That cultural fashion thing, like people just like the. I know that like a lot of cars will have a sport mode. Well, that you stop can turn it. You, you stop and think. Before power steering, you had to be a very strong, strong. person yeah. to park a car. And they, whoever invented power steering, they probably said, "Wow, this is really cool." Let's turn it all and the way so, to ten. You know, the easier it is to turn, the better. Rick, uh, you're chomping at the bit here. Well, one of the things back in the day, you had the big land yachts. The steering wheel was tiny, very small steering wheel. When? Uh, back say in the seventies. Well, you're, when you so had you're like, not you're not going far enough back. So you're or even you're, even into the sixties, no, the fifties. No, when the twenties. The, 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 <laughs> well, you get into the fifties. The steering wheels were much larger. Right, you get in, in the fifties and late early sixties. You had a much larger steering wheel. Yeah. But you also had a wheel that you turn three or four times around. Yeah. Versus a wheel now that it's one, yeah. one and a half revolutions, yeah. and yeah. you've you've almost got the side, yeah. uh, sideways. Uh, rack and pinion steering made a big difference 
on that versus a gearbox that has much more moving parts. So a safety issue. Yeah, so, I remember that you'd yeah, back up yeah. in a spot and you'd be sitting, the wheel be going around. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> less moving parts. It's safer. Uh, it's less parts to break. And, of course, also it's a better feel for the car that gives you a better response in emergency safety, yeah. situations. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot to it. Yeah. It was like driving a boat back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, that answer your question, Dan? Uh, yeah, and the, the suspension, though. I mean, you could, you know, you had a big car back then. You know, you could run over a, a curb stopper and barely people, feel it. Now I, think, feel it. <laughs> I think that's the same answer. I think that, that uh, the, the driver and the car needs to know the surface they're on. And I think that, uh, 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 that it's probably a matter of braking, turn, cornering, uh, uh, control of the car in an emergency situ- situation. The car has to feel the road, and the driver, unfortunately, has to feel the road, too. If, if you're in a car that floats, and I remember some of these big cars back in the day that, that were just like gliding on ice, but they, weren't, they really weren't safe. You know, they felt good, and, and, and you didn't get any, uh, you know, uh, uh, cr- cricks in your neck from a long trip. But unfortunately, it wasn't the safe thing as to uh, to have that. And if you've ever been in a car that you suddenly are sliding on ice, and no matter where you turn that steering wheel or hit the pedals, doesn't matter. Nothing. The car is just on its own, doing what it wants yeah. to do. Been there, done that. That feeling of being out of control completely. I'd rather feel that bumpy ride, and be at least in control of the car. Oh, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay down here in sunny South Florida, away from the ice. <laughs> so, well, hey, uh, thank thank you for answering my question. That cleared things up for me because that's been bugging me for a long time. And um, I know you got other callers, so I'll let you guys. Hey, go. Dan, before you go, where are you from originally? I'm from West Palm Beach originally. Originally, okay. Wow. All right. Yeah. And Another Floridian. Nice to meet yeah, you. So is, so is my wife. The same doctor delivered us. So it's a small world. It mm. definitely yeah. is. Yeah. Well, thank thank you. you all for what you do. Thank you for everything. Thank you. All right. Have a- yeah, the driver must know the surface it's on. That's really important. Definitely important. 877-960-9960. Or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Your anonymous feedback, you can always take advantage of that. www.youranonymousfeedback.com. Now back to the recovery. No. We got Howard. Howard's calling right now. Good morning, Howard. Howard's morning. our regular How all, caller. Yeah. Uh, how you all doing? Notice my southern accent? I come from South Bronx. So uh, <laughs> that's where I'm a southern. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rick, I have a question for you. Let's see if I can stump you. What cars do not have ABS? Uh, railroad cars. I'm okay, not really. <laughs> I'm going to stump you this time. Cars nowadays without any lock brake system. Uh, I don't think there are any. Race cars. Well, those aren't cars. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Go, go try to buy one right now to run on the road okay. legally. Uh, you you okay. can't do it. Okay. Uh, next <laughs> next uh, comment. That, <laughs> now, I think I stumped you. Uh, next question. Which cars have to have nitrogen in the tires? Race car. Have to have? Uh, none actually have to have, but. Race car. As a course, uh, just a fact that they all do, that would be race cars such as NASCAR, uh, any Formula race cars, anything where they need to be accurately able to predict the expansion rate of that gas based on the temperature in order to pick up a tenth of a second to win a race. That would be pretty much any race car. Correct. Okay, now, next uh, comment I have to make. Uh, a friend of mine bought a car, and it didn't have a uh, spare tire. Instead, it had something to blow up uh, the spare and uh, a couple of other tools. Uh, Toyota, I believe, except for the Supra, Every car has a, a spare, is that correct? Nope. Uh, Prius Prime, when it first came out, 
instead of doing a spare tire, they gave you a basically a, a can, a fix a flat, and a small electric compressor that you could plug in, and you would put this fix a flat in the tire, which of course would then mean that you could not repair the tire. You had to replace it. Um, you had to replace the tire pressure sensor and clean the wheel out. So it was a pretty big nightmare. Um, several other companies tried that deal, and there were several of our cars that had uh, all-wheel drive, like Sienna all-wheel drives, had no spare tire. As a matter of fact, that's the reason they were putting run flats on them, which is, and run flats were the reason that the government came out and said, you have to have a tire pressure system on all these cars. Interesting. Okay, one other thing, a comment that I have to make. Uh, if you have a spare tire, make sure you, you uh, have the proper uh, pressure in it because uh, it's very easy uh, over a number of years for uh, the spare tire to go down. Uh, so make sure you check that. It, it could be hard because you have to, you know, you, you, to get it out is not easy. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. All and right, as, a, as a life hack, yeah. carry a little battery operator or, or plug in the power outlet operated air compressor in your car. You can pick them up for less than 50 bucks on Amazon. And they're the size of a, almost the size of a wallet now. But it will pump up a tire in a short amount of time to get you down the road. No, I have a compressor. It's a great, great thing to have in a car. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much for the information. Uh, you have you all you all have a good day. Thanks, Howard. Thanks, Howard. You too. Thanks. Thank you for thank the call. You. Yeah, thank you, Howard. Uh, we're going to go to Sarah, who's been holding uh, from Boynton Beach. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, everybody. How are you all? Welcome. I am calling because it was a couple of weeks ago that I heard about this used car dealer in West Palm Beach who was taking out loans on people's credits. Did you guys hear about that? No. I mean, taking out loans for himself? He was taking out personal loans. Stealing identities. I briefly yeah. read about that. Um, yeah. Uh, but I have to confess, I, I did, I got busy something, I don't know, I was interrupted. I understand. I'm not a part of your Earl on Cars or the Sunrise anymore, and I don't know why. But I do remember your number. Uh, well, thank you. So I'm glad. <laughs> we always worry about I that. All, I, I wish you all a great day. Thank you. I'm, look, I'm trying to look this up right now. It was in West Palm Beach, you said? Yes, 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 it was. Well, I'll continue was it, searching. Wasn't that last week, Sarah? It was. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Like I said, I briefly remember uh, reading yes. that, and I was interrupted. Never finished it. Oh. Well, you know what? I appreciate all of you and love you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, happy. Sarah. And thank, happy weekend. thank you for listening. Spread the word on our female callers. Let them know. We need to hear from them. Okay. We're... I close, found it. <laughs> close the line and Stu found the article. I was just article. a little too slow. Yeah, this was in Delray Beach. Um, it was uh, Jason Dennis. Uh, he owns and manages Car City in West Palm Beach. He's facing multiple fraud charges. He was arrested by the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Um, he took out multiple loans using customer information. And uh, he's out on bail, but he's going to go to trial and face the music. Mm. Interesting. Ooh. Yeah, Delray Beach. And that was in I the... Mean, well, it, I mean, he lives in Delray. It happened in West Palm Beach. It was at um, Car City. Car. Sounds like a little independent use, use lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. One of the little places. Okay, uh, we need to get to uh, some uh, yeah. texts and Facebook and Oh, yeah, Anne Marie and... has been, been ignored the entire uh, show. Or it's really? Almost, it's almost we over. We apologize. That's okay. <laughs> I liked her text because I've been thinking about this all the time. She, she says, good morning. Train wrecks have been in the news a lot lately. There are ways to minimize some of the carnage. For example, if your car gets stuck on the tracks and won't move, grab your cell phone, get out of the car, and get away from the tracks. Look for a blue and white sign near the crossing. Jonathan's going to put it up on the screen for those of you who are, who are watching the, the live stream. 
Um, it's a blue and white sign that should be clearly visible. The emergency notification so system sign includes an emergency phone number for the specific railroad responsible for that specific crossing and the U.S. Department of Transportation National Crossing inventory number, <laughs> which identifies the exact location where it is. Call that number, describe the problem, and give the National Crossing inventory number so the emergency response center can contact oncoming trains. But if you're going to grab the cell phone, don't look for it too long. Right. <laughs> I mean, true. Where is that cell phone? Maybe it's in the glove box. Exactly. <laughs> Check it, the back seat. Yeah. If there's, I think if there, if you see a train, com if there is a train coming visibly, just get out of there as fast. If you don't see any train coming, you can take a second or two to. I would, I would, phone. I would leap out and borrow somebody else's cell phone. Okay, you could do that. I would just start screaming at get the out car, of that call car. that number. <laughs> anyway. Um, it says once a, a train's a brakes are applied, it will still travel a mile uh, before it can come to a stop, depending on the speed, I'm sure. And the um, weight of the train. And the weight of the train. <laughs> and the friction Could be a on lot the track. More than that. And, how, and this is from Anne Marie. She signed it Mother Hen, which I really like. <laughs> and she sent us a picture of the thing, so you can watch that. And I didn't know what that, that, that was. Um, the reason why I'm thinking about trains lately is. Um, there was another bright line accident someone recently and i wrote there's been there's been 88 people killed in the last since 2017 when they opened up bright line and i just can't figure that out every it seems like every month there is there is somebody else that gets run over by this train and i'm just thinking maybe we're just not used to trains down here in south florida yeah but but we've had trains for a long time i, I just don't think that we counted them before i mean uh, with with it's, uh, it's, Amtrak. No, it, it's, it's, it's 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 so far out of the norm that it's, pick, it's been picked up by national news and I, I, what reminded me, it was a C, national CBS story that um, picked it up, and it's, it's, there is an, an anomalous, um, it's, it's an outlier. Really? There's something going on with Brightline. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, something else happened, and this is a true story. Um, my wife and my mother-in-law were, were driving in two separate cars, and they were in Jupiter, and they crossed the train tracks um, at A1A on Frederick Small. And a train, and they were doing, they've been all doing, down here, folks, if you're listening in, in, in Alaska, they're doing a lot of work on the train tracks around here. And uh, they were doing some testing, high-speed testing, and a train came out without any lights or, or crossing guards or crossing rails, did not come down, and they both gunned it through, so they had witnesses. If, if, if my wife told me, maybe I'd think she it wasn't, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyway, both of them came very shaken up, uh, called the Jupiter police and reported it. She didn't know about the blue sign um, at, the, at the railroad crossing. But what a story. Things. What's the blue sign? The blue sign is, is what Amory texted about. It has a number. So if you call it and you give them that number, they'll oh. tell you that they'll, they'll tell any approaching trains to stop. That is a terrible story. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. Very, it was very scary. And, Frightening. Uh, but she, she reported it, and I hope that the Jupiter police you know, passed it along to the NTSA or something like that. Oh, yeah. sure they did. Yeah. Wow. That's incredibly dangerous. Yep. Very much so. Scary. And and where is this sign uh, that you and uh, Earl were just up oh on every uh, Anne Marie? F oh, was she, uh, on every railroad crossing, there's a blue and white sign. But wait, but but where? I mean, it's, it's right on the. Uh, is it over the no, tracks? It's, it's, right, it's it? right on the it's on the side. The right. sign you see with the big cross X and the flashing lights is mounted right on it. Okay, where it says, "Do you yeah, stop where, where here the, where on the red?" Where the crossing come down? Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's what you look for if there's an emergency. But like I had a, a, ser a funny but a serious point. If there's a don't don't waste too much time looking for yourself. Wow, on. that's so scary. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, let's see. We have one. Good morning. Um, I have a 2006 Tundra and the tire pressure monitoring system TPMS system in my truck. Uh, uh, monitors pressure in five tires that includes the spare. Can the sensor in the spare be removed and the TPMS system reprogrammed to monitor four instead of five? Love listening to your show. Thanks. That's from Everett. Unfortunately, no. Oh, um, right. That's for some reason that system was never really designed very well, my, my opinion. They should have had you have the ability to remove the spare, but in other cases, you should have the ability to put a sensor in the spare. Yeah. Because like my own truck with a full size spare does not come with that fifth sensor and you have to go with that. But however, uh, certain models like Land Cruisers, you could actually have an entire second set of sensors, a second set of wheels, and you would tell it which set of wheels. So if you were running summer tires versus winter tires for up north, you could literally just have 
two sets of wheels and just swap them. Or if you're like traversing like the Arabian desert and you need extra tires. Exactly that too. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's a question here. A very, some, probably for you Earl says, just wondering if you have any idea the percentage of markup and auto manufacturer charges on the vehicles delivered to the dealerships. I realize prices vary and it's impossibly precise. Is there any rule of thumb on the subject? Well, just whatever they can get away with. The manufacturers always want to increase prices, and um, they can do it a lot easier because it's uh, the, the pricing of an automobile is probably the most complex pricing of any product uh, sold anywhere. And uh, you have rebates and holdbacks and phony advertising charges. And we talk about all the phony fees yeah. that car, the car dealers well, no, charge. I think, yeah, I think he was, he was just talking about what the manufacturers are making per car. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, the manufacturers uh, can actually increase the price to a car dealer, for example, by lowering the amount of dealer incentives that they have on the car or or, or by uh, changing the uh, the freight uh uh, you know, the, the freight is like a, a dealer fee to a customer. The freight is like a, a dealer fee to a dealer because it doesn't cost the, the manufacturer anywhere near what they charge uh, per car. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to say the average of freight now is, what, $1,000? Yes. Okay. So you have, you have uh, uh, 10 cars on a truck. Uh, yeah, 10 okay. cars on a carrier. So it does not cost $10,000 to get a truckload of cars from Detroit to Florida. No. And they charge $10,000 freight. That's a dealer fee screwing the, the dealer. And of course, the dealer passes the cost along to the customer. And inadvertently, you have no choice. Especially and, nowadays, that yeah. char- people are charging over. But, the, but the, 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 the increased cost to the dealers has gone up steadily over the past yeah. Three four years. Yeah, and I looked it up. So uh, as far as like profit, gross profit margins, um, it, it looks it, it varies all the way up through manufacturers, but it looks around around looks around ten fifteen percent. Toyota is making fifteen percent. Uh, Ford is making a fifteen percent profit gross profit margin. Uh, they're recently making a negative net profit margin, and, uh, and Toyota is netting net profit margin around six percent. Yeah, and uh, and Tesla is about twenty three. Yes. Now. Uh, here, here's this is this is just uh, you know, Pete. You're not going to believe me when I say this, but car dealers themselves don't know what they pay for the car. And in in my own dealership, oh, uh, it, it is a uh, rocket scientist project to figure out what really it, you pay for a car. It is so complicated, and I think it's on purpose that is uh, done that way. Uh, the dealers literally. Uh, 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 you can talk to a dealer and you say, "What is your net cost on this car?" And he'll t- it'll take him a while with a pencil and paper and a calculator yeah. to tell you what his cost is. I could do it in like three about three minutes. Yeah, let's say now Stu is a general manager of the dealership. He knows well, probably less. Yeah, but no, I, couple, I, it takes I, me a couple of minutes. It takes a couple. Of, yeah, yeah. But any other product, you say, "What do you? What's your cost on yeah, that?" Right. You exactly. Know, like that. Yeah. Right. So it's a it's a conspiracy between the dealers and the manufacturers. Uh, ultimately, actually, it's promoted by the dealers. I mean, the manufacturers pass along to the dealers, and the customer takes the the, the screw on when they buy the car. If, I wonder if I could use AI. I think I could figure out a way just to have it just take a glance at the invoice. With a couple other I inputs. think even AI would not be able to do this. It is so complicated. Well, I used AI just now for the radio show. I'm not <laughs> kidding. Um, we got a, a very long text, and it's but it, it, I, I was looking through it, and it was it's very, uh, it, it's very heart wrenching. And um, but I had to summarize it, so I had a Chat GPT summarize it for me. So I'm going to go ahead and read the text, the summary. <clears throat> the the texter sh- uh, shares a story about having to get rid of their 2021 Honda Accord Sport due to a recurring head gasket issue and a slipping transmission. They traded in for a 2022 Camry SC and they loved it. Um, the texter um, shared a, a story about a difficult period in their life where their family faced some serious financial hardships and they had to rely on a 2008 Toyota Prius as their only vehicle. The um, texter worked 75 miles away from home and had to stay at their mother's house during the week, leaving uh, their wife with the Prius and four children. 
the Prius got him through three years of tough winters and never left the wife stranded. Um, Texter um, just concludes that they will never buy anything besides a Toyota for the rest of their life. And it's a, it's a great story. Hmm. Great story. Okay. And that was a jet, GBT? Well, it, it, it was a very long text, oh, very and we didn't long, have time yeah. to read on the whole thing. It had a yeah. lot of details in it, and so I copied it and pasted it and said, could you summarize this yeah. in a few sentences? Did you know that Apple, uh, there's an app that Apple is censoring because the chat GBT that Apple was going to use for the app uh, would be uh, not for children's consumption. Oh, okay, some NS not suitable for work stuff. X-X rated, yeah. NS, uh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah, there's been some really, really uh, kooky things going on with this AI stuff. It's yeah. fun to play with, but it's a whole lot to ponder. All right, I'm caught up on text, but we did have some anonymous feedback. And uh, while well, I'm pulling that up, because they logged me out, what's going on over there on YouTube? Actually, things have been rather, uh, well, not so quiet. Uh, we were having some interesting discussions here. Okay. Um, earlier, David A. and I were discussing the ideas of the inventory coming back onto dealership lots, you know, he was wondering, would we ever see the days like we'd had five years ago when you could walk on the lot and there would be just row after row of cars I that you not. could choose from? Well, th and that was that was something that... I think that we got to do the mystery shopping report, folks. Are, are we? Oh, yeah, yeah. 940. Okay. Yeah. yeah we're gonna cool. have to, go. We're going to have to continue uh, these... Uh, Rick, uh, next week, uh, we're running out of time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important that you vote on the mystery shopping report. Our mystery shopping report is uh, from uh, Napleton, uh, North Lake Hyundai. And uh, you definitely want to listen to this mystery shopping report. And uh, as I sometimes say, well, these shops never cease to amaze me. Well, uh, Agent Lightning did a great job, and uh, Stu did a, a, a very, very nice well, job in writing it. I just want to say I didn't write an introduction because Napleton needs no introduction. <laughs> because they well, that's I mean seriously, I think that's well. First of all, they're they're all over the country, but that's one of the dealerships we can name, and every listener, no matter where they are, knows exactly who we're talking about. Yeah, they're in uh, they're they're in over six states, I believe. Yep. So, Mr. Recovering Car Dealer. Yeah, we got about five minutes here. Uh, <laughs> we got 19 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I arrived mid-afternoon. I'm speaking of the first person as if I were Agent Lightning, um, and walked around to see what inventory was available and to see if any salespeople would approach me. Then I headed inside after about six minutes of aimless wandering. I, I circled that because um, it tells you the attitude of car dealers today with the low supply, high demand, and insane pricing. The salespeople are... Uh, making a lot of money and they don't have to work too hard so uh someone comes over the lot nobody rushes out that's actually good in a way people in years past were were surrounded by i call them the wolf pack as soon as you got out of the car today you can get out and go to a car dealership and they just wait till you come in and take their time and they say Five thousand dollars over a sticker, take it or leave it. And don't you like that better though? It's uh, well, the, the salespeople love it, and uh, the car dealers love it. I was greeted as soon as I walked through the door by a younger salesman with a name tag that read Marcus. I let him know I was interested in the 2023 Santa Fe Hybrid SEL. Uh, I I chose this particular dealership uh, because they sold Hyundai's, and the consumer reports. Uh, ranked the 2023 Santa Fe Hybrid SEL as, I think, either the number one or number two best new car in for the year. So it's a good-looking car, too. I was just curious to see what uh, a car dealer would do selling a car that had the endorsement of consumer reports like that. Um, so uh, I followed him to his desk. He asked me for my name and driver's license and then asked if I'd be trading anything in. I said, I won't. I won't be trading it again. Then he asked if I would be registering it to the address listed on my license while mentioning how close I lived to the store. He asked if I would be leasing or financing. These are all qualifying subjects that, that you will always get when you go into a car dealership. I figured I'd switch it up today, and I said I would likely be paying cash out of my trust account. That's a, a nice, nice twist. He then asked me if I'm doing that because they offer me a low APR. <laughs> and I said, no. I said, my trust account would be pulling cash out. And then he laughed and said, 
uh, smacked himself on the forehead and said, yeah, oh, yeah, I knew that. I'm embarrassed. So, hey, hey, he's a, a genuine guy. I mean, I like that. Uh, you, may, you say something stupid and you admit it. Smack yourself on the forehead. That's really good. I like that. He then excused himself to go get the keys so we could go out on a test drive. I let him know I'd be outside getting myself familiar with a new car. He came out and said he'd move it out in a rather uh, in a tight location, so we jumped in the driver's seat. Uh, I, I kidded him about, uh, don't wreck my new car when you back it out. Once he pulled it out, he asked me to please be patient with him as he needed to run back in. This is another nice natural touch, I think. Uh, maybe a little too far, uh, because he had to go to the restroom. He said he, ne he needed to go really bad. I'm not <laughs> sure if that uh, is Emily Post-wise or not. I, it's, uh, I guess it's okay. Once we were both in the car, he went back uh, over the bells and whistles this car offered. When you hit the turn signal, a camera pops up on that side to show what you might be, what might be there in the way. And I, by the way, our Tesla, Nancy's and my Tesla, does the same thing. Very, very handy. Turn your signal on the left, it shows you a really big, beautiful picture of the left lane and all the cars and does the same thing on the right side. I love it. Uh, I asked, as, uh, as, as the shopper, I asked if hazards, uh, if the hazard lights are on, will both cameras show and, uh, and, and push the button, but they didn't. He, he said, hmm, I never thought about that. Uh, a little strange. So. We drove around on, on the neighborhood and headed back to the dealership on North Lake Boulevard. He told me that another customer asked him what happens if you're driving 90 miles an hour on the interstate and someone hits the park button. Right? I can see wondering what would happen. Uh, since it's a place easy to hit, he said the car won't do anything. It's deactivated when in motion. Once back at the dealership, uh, he asked if I had any other questions and wanted to make sure I really did like the car. I said, I do. I would love to see how much it will be out the door. We headed back to his desk, and, let, and I let him know I wouldn't be wanting any, any extras, and I would need a buyer's order for my trust. To, uh, before I can get the money. He, uh, he asked if I'd like um, water, coffee, while I wait for the numbers and then excuse himself. I sat waiting for about 20 minutes and then, that's a long time, Marcus came back and apologized, asking me to please uh, just give him a few minute, more minutes as there are only two sales managers here today. I agreed, but I said I would need to leave soon to get my daughter at the bus stop. Finally, 12 minutes later, returned with two worksheets this is, uh, this is a new twist. I haven't seen it's this before. This is uh, uh, shopping, Mr. Shopping Report first. Two worksheets. One was my deal, and one was supposed to be what it would be if they don't give me a huge discount. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, actually, it's clever. I mean... This is what it could be. This yeah, is a worst-case scenario. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, we all want a discount, right? And we all know how people mark things way up so they can mark them down again and impress you. So this is that psychology. Say, boy, did I get a big discount in Naples. And they, they marked it up $2 million, but then they marked it down a million. So I, if you get my drift. Uh, he, he wanted to contrast the two, as I just said. He wanted to see that they are adding on, um, uh, he wanted me to see that they are adding on market adjustments, but his sales manager heavily discounted it for me. A hypothetical worksheet labeled should be <laughs> added an $8,995, $9,000 market adjustment to the 42,000 MSRP, and also added an $899 dealer fee, uh, you're going to have to wait for this, folks. It's a long list. A $129 e-tag fee, a $149 private page agency fee, a $217.50 floor of dock stamps, a $199 dock fee, $2,570 platinum warranty. I'm running out of breath here. $998 low jack. 299 nitro inflation, 599 window tent, $1,230 Xylon protection, and $199 for Napleton maintenance. $16,301 in total. Absolutely, that's a should be worksheet. The worksheet labeled is, now here comes the big discount. 
<laughs> That's a whole other car you just added. <laughs> right. And represented the deal they were giving me was better. It was exactly the same, except they knocked $6,000 off uh, the market adjustment. The real deal was only $10,430 over MSRP. Much better. Much better. I, I told him my trust manager likely won't go for all these add-ons. Please take it back to the sales manager and give me the best deal. I don't have much more time, he said, and we don't have much more time. Okay, please give him five to ten more minutes. After more than ten minutes, Marcus came back with another sheet saying he was able to renew, renew, remove most of it. New York sheet came down another 6000 but I was still 4000 over MSRP. Marcus made sure to tell me that he's not supposed to give out any proprietary information, so I couldn't take the worksheets with me. He asked me not to take the picture. I asked him how I'm supposed to give the information to my trust fund to get approval. However, it's unlikely they will approve it due to the market adjustments, and I took the pictures anyway. a girl. Next day, Marcus told, uh, called me and asked if I had spoken with my trust. I informed that I would not be moving forward due to the markup and other fees and that I would be looking for all other available options. He said he would speak with his manager to see if there's anything else they could do to lower the price. Garrett, the general sales manager, followed up with me after Marcus. He asked how I was treated at the dealership and if there was anything he could do to earn my business. I gave him the same response, that there's no deal with market adjustment. He mentioned that he's not trying to make anyone a bad deal, and that he could meet me halfway with a $1,500 market adjustment. He also mentioned the other dealerships in the area are doing market adjustments up to three to uh, 10000 for hybrids. I thanked him for his time, and uh, this is just silly. I mean, this is, uh, uh, I could use another word, that just napled it. I, I, mean, I don't understand. They just <laughs> got hammered by the feds, and yeah. they just paid millions of dollars. And, and I know you said the, yeah. the money is not a lot, but the publicity, yeah. no, one, no one's paying attention. Well, you know, not only that, the doc fee and the notary fee, that's a, that's a lie because you uh, don't have doc fees. It's a cash oh, oh, sale. Oh, doc stamps, is, that doc would be stamps. illegal. Yeah, that's yeah. For, that's on a uh, finance. That's a tax exactly. on, uh, there's, there's on no the There's no financing. Uh, there's, no, there's no doc stamps. Uh, yeah, the whole thing is uh, is just off the chart. Federal Trade Commission, uh, you're you're not listening. But uh, you know, uh, 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 Ashley Moody, you're not listening. Uh, none of the regulators are listening. And Napleton, who is as Stu just said, was fined what ten million, twenty million, 10, twenty million. I think. Yeah, twenty million. Uh, that's how much it bothered him. They're still doing the exact same thing that they did before, and uh, uh, we really don't really need to take a vote here, but we will. Because uh, I know you folks out there that are listing this are probably as uh, shocked as we are. Not that Napleton is this bad, but that Napleton is this bad after they've already been fined $20 million by the Federal Trade Commission. What does it take? Maybe $200 billion would get their attention. Let's, yeah. let's, uh, yeah, we got some, um, yeah. I got a F triple minus for, <laughs> from Mark. Mark sent it in. He goes, they need to be charged with something much, much worse than that. Yeah. Um, Bob, um, Napleton Hyundai, I marked my grade up to an F plus, but I discounted it back down to an F. <laughs> Very good. How do you like that? And Anne Marie, uh, Mother Hen, <laughs> F. And I'm, I'm going to concur with my people over here. Boy, I got, I got another one just popped in. We must have irritated people. <laughs> Uh, another big fat F, and uh, I agree wholeheartedly. I'm giving him an F. I'm just checking Facebook real quick. Nope. There we go. On to you, Rick. Kirk in West By God, Virginia. Oh, no. He had another Napleton. King of the junk fees and shifty sales tactics. Napleton once again earns a solid F-. minus. Ah, uh, let's see. Matt C., I went to that dealership once. They called it the Napleton Buying Experience, LOL. <laughs> he didn't give a grade, but hopefully he will. Hey, Matt, come back with a grade for me, buddy. Uh, Tom Stickle, Napleton. Napleton, how do you cheat me? Let me count the ways. F, doc stamps on a cash purchase is a bold-faced lie. Johnny Z. Fraidley, I'll give him a generous F+, plus because the battery fee is only $1.50. <laughs> Scott Hunter, F. Tim Gilliland, here's the price, just don't tell anyone, D-. minus. <laughs> Mark Smith, D-. minus. Mark Ryan, unbelievable, F. Rocky Blockatiel, F minus nitrogen again, really? <laughs> Brian Sedlatko, how is this dealership still in business? F, B 
Baby Boomer, Big F. Uh, myself, uh, it's an F. Run away from Napleton, folks. Oh my God. Yeah, two, they're back to two ninety nine for Nitro. Remember, like that's what when Nitro first came out, they were selling for three hundred bucks, and yeah. then it came down. Now it's you know ninety nine, sixty nine dollars. Napleton's back. It's it's inflation, folks. They they got to earn that twenty million back. I know. They they probably have. I just don't know how their attorneys allow them to put a two hundred and seventeen dollar and fifty cent. Uh, Florida doc Florida, stamps. Florida doc stamps. The Florida documentary stamps, are, which are only charged on finance. By, uh, by, by the state of Florida. By the state of Florida. And, and, uh, Is he giving that to the state of Florida? I mean, yeah. that's that's blatant fraud. He's doing that on yeah. uh, to thousands of customers, and he's saying this is a Florida tax, yeah. and he's pocketing it. So that's, that shows you what kind of local regulation we have, folks. I mean, uh, when a dealer can do, openly break the law like this and just be given amnesty, uh, Ashley Moody, uh, you know, uh, we need uh, you know, we we need somebody to investigate the media uh, for not going after these people and the regulators. Are you, uh, maybe we need to go after the regulators who are they're they're as bad as Napleton. This story's got legs. Come on, folks yeah. in the media, if you're listening, yeah. you're yeah. not. It's Saturday. Yeah, let's go go after these people. I mean, this this is not this is black and white. It's not gray, and uh, nobody could give anybody. Uh, it's got to be an F. I, I I hate to give Fs, but this is a slam dunk F. Yes, Nancy? definitely. And you've given out a few Fs lately with mm-hmm. your mystery shopping report. He's, he's, Very he's hardened. unusual. He's become he's hardening. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, it's hard not to have strong feelings against someone who has behaved so badly. Uh, seriously, folks, uh, if you take a look and look up Napleton, uh, you're going to read that Napleton has become synonymous with excellence and teamwork. The family, uh, they have so many dealerships, uh, over 83 of them in six or uh, eight different states, I believe. They opened up during Prohibition. Exactly. Yeah, but maybe the ones in the other states aren't as bad. I mean, I, do you really well, think? No, they, they, I think the fine. Um, was it a different state? Yeah. They, I, weren't, they weren't all, they, yeah, they weren't all here in Florida. They yeah. got th- th- that, this Hyundai that we just went to uh, yesterday <laughs> you know, was one of the ones that got yeah. fined. Back, back in 1931, you know, in Chicago's South Side, there was Edward Nableton, and that's where he, he uh, began bootlegger. this uh, family tradition of taking uh, uh, taking care of people. But now, uh, I don't know when it began. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to be out of time. I could go on and on about uh, this, this place and uh, the craziness and the people that they've taken advantage of. It's unfortunate. I give them an F. Okay. Oh, and uh, Matt C. came back and he says, my grade, you ask? I just purchased my fifth vehicle f- from Earl Stewart Toyota this week. Best grade I can give you. I guess That's, that says is, it all. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, it's, but just, I know we're out of time, but just remember, you know, we laugh at it and we say, why do people do that and blah, blah. The fact is, people, you know, uh, go in and buy cars there and they get taken advantage of it and they don't know. Uh, obviously, because if they didn't, uh, Naples and Hyundai would be out of business. So they're selling cars and they're making money. And the people that are being taken advantage of are the people that really can't defend themselves. You can, you can, you can criticize them, but it's just not right. I mean, the victims, their victims are going in there no, n- not knowing uh, the Naples yeah. reputation. So, and that's the media's fault. Shame on the media. Shame Ashley on Moody, we really need you. We definitely need you. The people need you. They voted for you. We voted for you. Thank you for joining us this morning. We had an interesting show, a great show again. We'll be right back here next week. It's 8 a.m. next Saturday morning. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. <laughs>